painted the engine gold to represent all of the stupid money I've dumped into this project. The shock towers were going to cause clearance issues in the van body, so I had to build custom plates. I was too lazy to figure out the thread size for the turbo oil inlet. Instead, I drilled holes and tapped them, if that makes any sense. Here, I'm building a bracket for my alternator. I had a local shop turn a 6BT alternator into a single wire 130 amp alternator. Shining bright Take me home tonight I just wanna show you the true light Let me up and make me feel alright Here I'm building a custom fuel plate to accommodate the sending unit, the fuel return line, and the fuel supply line. having to buy an oil filter relocation kit for $230 because my big stupid turbo got in the way. Always use a proper vise or clamp when using power tools. I can't stress safety enough. We tried starting the engine for quite a while. We ended up figuring out it was a fuel supply issue, and it ended up being the fuel pump. That was one thing I didn't replace, because two months ago, I decided that waiting two weeks for a fuel pump was too long. Start up. 
after the rebuild, see what happens. Shout out to my friend Dan that reminded me it's important to make sure the vehicle is out of gear before starting it. I probably would have put this through the house. When the engine didn't start right away, I decided it was best to break open the injector lines and bleed any air out of them. I decided to run temporary intake lines until I figure out a place for the intercooler. the motor mount bushings compressing as much as they did so I ended up with some clearance issues with the oil pan and the cross member so uh, I decided to cut off part of the cross member because it's just a structurally integral part of the frame sweet oil pan has two pinholes in it as well. What a surprise. Here's my secret to getting some of the sickest shots on the web. $10 tripod and a 1 in 5 16 inch wrench for perfect center of gravity.